Good morning. It is Friday, April 17th. Today we're going to prepare for our trigonometry test by practicing. It's a very short test, um, but it's important to understand how to do all these concepts that we're about to talk about. So everything here is what you need to know for this unit. Let's just talk a moment about everything, and then we're going to see some examples dealing with each thing. Any point on the unit circle is cosine of theta comma sine theta. That's what your ASTC is based on. Let's start with the ASTC. In quadrant one, they're all positive. In quadrant two, only sine is positive, which makes tangent and cosine negative. In quadrant three, tangent is positive, which makes sine and cosine negative. In quadrant four, cosine is positive, that makes sine and tangent negative. If you don't understand what's going on here, ask. To convert between degrees and radians, you are multiplying. If you're going to radians, then pi is on top. If you're going to degrees, then 180 is on top. Um, to find your trig ratios, understand your reciprocal pairs. S goes with C and C goes with S. So cosecant, the C goes with the S, the sine. Secant goes with cosine. And then tan and cotan are reciprocal, is the third reciprocal pair. So there's two different methods for finding your um, for finding your trig ratios. One is your triangle method. If it tells you that it passes through a point or that sine, cosine, or tangent is something over something, make a right triangle and use Sokotoa. Once you use Sokotoa, you just do the reciprocal of each of them to get the reciprocal functions. Um, <clears throat> know your Pythagorean triples, 3, 4, 5, 5, 12, 13, 8, 15, 17, 7, 24, 25. Um, what comes with the most is the order in which I put them in. So 3, 4, 5 comes with the most, then 5, 12, 13, etc. Also understand that any that any multiple of each of those will also be a Pythagorean triple. And if it's not a Pythagorean triple, or even if it is, you could always use Pythagorean theorem to find the third. Your other methods, your Pythagorean identity method, you, they have to give you sine or cosine in order to use that one. We sub it into the Pythagorean identity. We use tangent equals sine over cosine to find tangent. From there, once we have our three regular trig functions, we put one over each of them to find their reciprocals, because by putting one on top, that's your reciprocals. And then your final step, which is the same for triangle method, is to use your ASTC to determine the signs. So make sure you understand that applies for both. I probably should have had it in here, but make sure you're, you're always checking your signs at the end. So let's go through some examples. And then um, you'll practice, and you'll take your test. Hopefully this will be a good boost, a good opportunity to raise your grade. And let's get right into it. Let's go purple. I like purple. If I want to sketch a radian angle, I'm going to start by converting to degrees. If I'm converting to degrees, then 180 is on top. And I'm multiplying by 180 over pi. My pi's cancel. I'm left with 7 times 180 over 4. I can go to my calculator, 7 times 180 over 4. Let's use my alpha y equals enter, because I like that. 7 times 180 over 4 is 315. So now I do my 0, 90, 180, 270, 360, 315s between 270 and 360. That's 7 pi over 4. Understand that the this is the angle that I just sketched. It's always starting at 0, and it's going around counterclockwise. And also understand that this right here is your reference angle. The reference angle is always the angle made with the x-axis. That's it. In number two, um, let's just go over number two as well. It wants me to sketch 13 pi over 20. So my first step is to convert to degrees. 
by multiplying by 180 over pi, I have 13 times 180 over 20. Thirteen times one eighty over twenty is one hundred and seventeen. So it's got to be in quadrant two, which I mean they're all in quadrant two. So what I guess you have to understand is what that means. If the angle is there, it means it's starting at zero and going to there. So these two seem good as far as the angle itself goes this is going the wrong way uh, and this one seems good as well now the reference angle is always the acute angle made with the x-axis this is not the angle made with the x-axis this is the angle made with the y-axis so that's out this is not an acute angle so that one's out this is the acute angle made with the x-axis that would be your answer. So it's just understanding what the angle is and what the reference angle is. The reference angle is always the acute angle made with the x-axis. And the angle, wherever it ends, it always starts at zero and goes to wherever it ends. All right, I see sine of theta equals 5 over 6. Whenever I see sine, cosine, or tangent equals something over something, I'm going to make my triangle. And follow my procedure. So it's in quadrant two. It says it's in quadrant two, so I'm going to draw my angle to quadrant two. I go down to the x axis. So Katoa, so Katoa. So sine is opposite over hypotenuse. Opposite hypotenuse. To find the third side. Is this a Pythagorean triple? No. So I have to do a squared plus b squared equals c squared. a and b are the legs. 5 squared plus x squared. c is the hypotenuse. 6 squared. 25 plus x squared equals 36 minus 25. x squared equals 11. Square root. I can't take the square root of 11, so I'm left with radical 11. So now I'm going to use Socatella to find my three trig functions. Cosine is A over H. Sine is O over H. Tangent is O over A. A over H is radical 11 over 6. O over H is 5 over 6. O over A is 5 over rad 11. The reciprocal functions, I do the reciprocal of them. Make sure you match them up correctly. I lined it up nicely here for you. But understand that S goes with C, sine goes with cosecant, C goes with S, cosine goes with secant, and tan and cotan are the other pairs. And that's great and all, but I got four of them wrong. Because your final step is to do your all students take calculus. I'm in quadrant two. So only sine is positive, which means that everything else is negative. And that's it. All right, it's a relatively simple procedure, but there's a few steps to it. you got to practice it. It's the kind of question that needs to be practiced. You need to do it a bunch of times, and if you do, you should be good with it. Every region, pretty much every region asks this question. Uh, this one's similar. I might as well go over it as well. A circle centered at the origin has a radius of 4. So the center's at the origin. The radius is 4. The terminal side of an angle theta intercepts in quadrant 3 at point P. The x-coordinate is 2, which makes this 2. Find all six trig functions. Well... We talked about the radius is the hypotenuse of the triangle. Since a radius is always the distance from the point on the circle to the center, the radius will always be the hypotenuse. 
Is this a triple? No. So I would do a squared plus b squared equals c squared. 2 squared plus x squared equals 4 squared. I do the algebra. And I get radical 12. So now it wants the six trig functions. So let's do sine, cosine, tangent. So uh, toa. So sine is all over h, rad 12 over 4. Cosine is a over h. Oops, a over h, 2 over 4, tangent is o over a, rad 12 over 2. So now the reciprocal functions, the reciprocal of sine is cosecant, so I flip that. The reciprocal of cosine is secant, so I flip that, and 4 over 2 is 2, and I flip tan, and I get cotan is 2 over rad 12. Now that's great and all, but four of them are wrong. Oops, I do not know what I just did. All students take calculus in quadrant three, tangent and cotangent are positive. Everything else is negative. And that's it. So understand that when you have a circle, the radius is the hypotenuse. All right, this is the last example we're going to do Use, using the identity sine squared plus cosine squared equals one, find the six trig values. So this is the, called the Pythagorean identity. It's a different method for finding the six trig functions. So let's do it. When they give you, they have to give you either sine or cosine. Here it's giving you cosine. So I'm going to substitute into sine squared plus cosine squared equals one. You might be saying, I thought cosine came first. It doesn't matter. Since addition is commutative, it doesn't matter the order. So I have sine squared theta plus a negative 0.28 squared equals one. I have sine squared theta plus negative 0.28 squared negative 0.28 squared is 0 0.0784 subtract 0 0.0784 it's a little messy sorry One minus point zero seven eight four is point nine two one six. Square root sine theta equals second radical, second answer, point nine six. So sine is 0.96 cosine is I'm just gonna write 0.28 for now again I like to deal with the negatives at the end now tan is sine over cosine so tan is 0.96 over 0.28 0.96 over 0.28 to the nearest hundredth, I got 3.43. Now to find the, recipro the reciprocal functions, 
it's going to do the reciprocal of each. 1 over 0.96, 1 over 0.28, 1 over 3.43, 1 over 0.96 is 1.04. And again, in this problem, I said to round to the nearest hundredth. 1 over 0.28. is 3.57 1 over 3.43 that's great and all but four of them are wrong all students take calculus it says I'm in quadrant two in quadrant two only sign is positive so the other ones must be negative. So it's a very short unit. There's not that much. I mean, within the lessons, we kind of built up like the first four or five lessons into one lesson. That was a sketching radian angles. So to sketch a radian angle, convert to degrees. Then you do your zero through 360 and sketch it. Understand the reference angle is the acute angle made with the x-axis and the angle always starts at zero uh, from there if they give you sine cosine or tangent equals something over something make a triangle if it's not a pythagorean triple use your pythagorean theorem to find the third side Use Sokotoa to find your three initial trig functions, and to find the reciprocal functions, just flip them, find the reciprocal of them. And if they give you the radius of a circle, that's your hypotenuse, so that can come up with another type of question as well. And then your other option, if they give you sine or cosine, you can use the Pythagorean identity, sol sub into that to do the algebra. Tangent is sine over cosine. And then once you have your three, you're going to find the reciprocals uh, to find the reciprocal functions. And don't forget at the end, you always want to check the sign. It's in quadrant two, so only sign is positive. Everything else is negative. Practice, ask me questions on Remind if you have them. It's a very, very short test. It's a little, literally three questions, but it's a great opportunity for you to raise your third quarter grade. I can prepare for my trig test by practicing, so I hope you choose to practice. Have a great day.